Hey everyone, Kerry here. Once again, one of the ways to survive this uh, difficult season we're in with so many hard and difficult and, and actually bad things happening. Um, one of the ways to survive it is to focus on the good, to uh, remember the good, to seek it out and to celebrate the good things that are happening. And so it was a joy to get to create a bunch of more good news videos uh, for the last couple weeks. And if you check out the previous videos I've made in this series by going to the bottom of any page on our church website. Click on the link to our church's YouTube channel there and you'll find them all there along with a bunch of other great resources. For this week though, I'm down here. And why am I why am I on the floor? Well, <laughs> it's because I'd like to read you a story. And it's a little book that was given to my son by a professional counselor that some of you may know, Dr. A. Wong. Wait. No, that's too obvious. Dr. Anna H. Well, anyway, so she gave my son this book, and we've actually been going through the book of Job in uh, our Sunday morning live streams and in our life groups recently. We've been exploring the book of Job in the Bible. And one of the things we've seen in the book of Job is that uh, his friends responded to his suffering in two different stages. So let's look at those real quick here. First of all, they respond to Job. And, uh, and then we're going to look first at the second responses that they have. They start to accuse Job of wrongdoing. They start to call into question his character. They start to assume he's made mistakes. They're giving him advice he's not asking for. All these ways of responding to Job's suffering his friends are doing that are not very helpful. But then we get to chapter, we go back to chapter 2 and we see their initial response at the very beginning. Chapter 2 verse 13 says, Then they sat on the ground with him. For seven days and nights, no one said a word to Job, for they saw that his suffering was too great for words. So, how do we respond to our friends, our family members, our neighbors that are suffering in this unique season? Well, for that, I'd like to read you this book. It's called The Rabbit Listened. Let's check it out. One day, Taylor decided to build something. Something new. Something special. Something amazing. Taylor was so proud. But then, out of nowhere, things came crashing down. The chicken was the first to notice. Cluck, cluck, what a shame. I'm so sorry, sorry, sorry this happened. Let's talk, 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 talk about it. Cluck, cluck, cluck. But Taylor didn't feel like talking. So the chicken left. Next came the bear. Roar, roar, how horrible. I bet you feel so angry. Let's shout about it. Rawr, rawr. But Taylor didn't feel like shouting, so the bear left. The elephant knew just what to do. Trumpeta! I can fix this. We just need to remember exactly the way things were. But Taylor didn't feel like remembering, so the elephant left also. One by one they came, the hyena, hee 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 hee, let's laugh about it. The ostrich, gulp, let's hide and pretend nothing happened. The kangaroo, tisk tisk, what a mess, let's throw it all away. And the snake, shh, let's go knock down someone else's. But Taylor didn't feel like doing anything with anybody, so eventually they all left until Taylor was alone. In the quiet, Taylor didn't even notice the rabbit, but it moved closer and closer until Taylor could feel its warm body. Together they sat in silence until Taylor said, please stay with me. The rabbit listened. 
The rabbit listened as Taylor talked. The rabbit listened as Taylor shouted. The rabbit listened as Taylor remembered and laughed. The rabbit listened to Taylor's plans to hide and to throw everything away or to ruin things for someone else. Through it all, the rabbit never left. And when the time was right, the rabbit listened to Taylor's plans to build again. I can't wait, Taylor said. It's going to be amazing. So, our question is again, how do we respond to our friends, our family members, our neighbors who are suffering in this time? I think one of our answers should be, we should listen. We should listen first. We should listen carefully. We should listen often and listen with compassion. And then that begs the question, how do we listen? <laughs> Not all of us are great at listening. We don't have those skills naturally inside us or we haven't built them up yet. So what are some good ways to listen? Well, here's one passage that we can check out to help us learn how to be good listeners. It's in James chapter 1, verse 19. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. So our first thing to know to be good listeners is to be patient. Silence is okay. Be willing to hear someone and let them share before you share back. Our next passage is in Proverbs. Proverbs 10, 19. When there are many words, transgression is unavoidable, but he who restrains his lips is wise. So talk less. That's a good way to listen too. Be willing to let someone share a, a paragraph or two or three paragraphs of information before you respond and just respond with one sentence or two. Here's some more tips also for some Proverbs. Proverbs 18.13. If one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and his shame. So first, show a person that you're hearing them. And then second, use affirming language to show them that you're listening. And then third, uh, summarize what they're sharing with you to show that you have been listening well. Then fourth, then if they are open to it, if they want it, then you can share advice. Then you can use words or actions to help with the situation. So how do we respond to our friends, our family, our neighbors who are suffering? Well, we listen. We listen first. We listen carefully. We listen with love and with compassion. And then we can respond with actions and with words to help them out. So in this season, maybe, maybe you're suffering too. Maybe this pandemic has been painful for you too. And if you don't feel like you have someone you can share with, if you've already tried a friend or a family member and you just feel like, man, there's no one to listen to you, let us know. Go ahead and reach out at neighborhoodchurch.com. Um, you can join a life group there where you'll find friends who can listen to you, support you each week. And if there's a way our church can be praying for you in this time, go ahead and let us know at this link to send in prayer requests. We would love to be praying for you in this time too. I'd love to hear what you have to say and listen to you as well. So if you want to leave comments or leave questions uh, below, that would be great. Or you can email me again at carry at neighborhoodchurch.com. Thanks so much for listening.